Hello, Ed from Pinball Mayhem here. I'd like to show you today how to replace the light bulbs in this Rockola RS3200 uh, speaker. This is a, it's actually a speaker, it's meant to be mounted on the wall. It is a reproduction of the Wurlitzer 4008 speaker, and there's a few differences uh, between them. Uh, but first off, it's, it's, uh, it's very similar looking if you look at pictures online. Uh, the biggest differences between the two is uh, the bubble tubes. This machine, uh, this speaker, then right in the middle here there is a speaker. Uh, this one has four bubble tubes that bubble up towards the top. The 4008 Wurlitzer actually did not have bubble tubes, and that's one, one way you can tell the difference just by looking at pictures does it have this window. Replacement plastics are available from Victory Glass for this, and uh, you know you want to make sure you get the right ones without the window or with, and the corners are the, the, the corner reds, um, or the top center reds. But uh, the 4008 actually doesn't have the bubble tubes, it's just painted white here, and notice that unlike the 1015 plastics, the green, yellow, red are on the outside, so it's very visible painted when it's even off, as opposed to the 1015 that it's cream on the outside, and you can see those colors once it's turned on. The 4008 is also larger. I don't know how much larger this this measures about 32 inches in diameter. Uh, I believe the 4008 is at least three feet, so 36 inches, uh, but it is physically larger as well. The 4008 though, because you don't have bubble tubes, can be mounted to the ceiling. And that's really what they were marketed for was you know mount, mount two or three on the ceiling of, of your uh, joint, pair them with a 1015, and they work great. Uh, and this has an eight ohm speaker in it and the 4008 actually had a field coil speaker that required high voltage to even let that speaker work so uh it, it was uh, three wires you had to run to it i believe don't quote me on that uh, i just finished replacing the bulbs in this so after we're done talking i'll show you that video of what's in all entailed and uh with the bulbs but a few notes on what's required to get this done uh first off uh bulbs it's gonna require four bulbs and if you're gonna open it up and go through the trouble replace all four they're uh, F15 T8 cold white uh, light. Uh, it's going to require four starters. Once again, don't cost that much. If you're going to go through the trouble of, of replacing them, you don't know when they're replaced. Less before before you hang this on the wall, you're going to want to replace all four starters, and that's an FS2 starter. And you'll see that in the video. Uh, so that's supplies we're going to need. Well, uh, hardware supplies, cleaning supplies. I used Windex for the mirrors because the mirrors are actually glass on this. Now, if you encounter a speaker or reproduction that they're not glass, you can tell by when you touch them they're not cold, they're plastic, then you want to not use Windex. And also, you can use paper towel with Windex. It does leave felt around, so I recommend uh, using a terry cloth, but also paper towel. You never want to use that on plastic. And uh, what you're gonna what you're gonna use on plastic is a, a Novus 2. This will help take scratches out. Uh, there's also a Novus 3. Uh, that will help take larger scratches out. You have to be careful when pushing on this. You don't want to push on the bubble tube area and break that, that bubble tube because then you're going to be in a world of pain, taking apart that fluid going everywhere, staining the plastics and stuff. So, you, But you can use Novus 3 and 2. Uh, to uh, That will help with, if you have a scuff mark, like a blanket or a piece of cardboard rubbed on it and it's a little dull, this is going to be the product you're going to use. And you just use a terry cloth to clean it. And then we also have... Uh, Novus 1, which is a plastic cleaner. Now also Novus 2 and Novus 3 um, can be used to clean the chrome off. It's, it's a very light abrasive, um, and if you have just some junk on there, you don't want to get the chrome cleaner out too, you can use this Novus 2 to clean the, clean the, the uh, plastic off. I'm actually staring at some spots of possibly bugs, dried bugs, or um, <clears throat> uh, possibly uh, maybe paint, or who knows, if it was painted, but this is just a, just a, it's, it's more of a polish, but we use it as a cleaner and it works great on, uh, plastics, all jukebox plastics, pinball plastics. There, you can stop staring at those spots that have been staring at me. <laughs> so those are the, those are the products that I use and I actually, uh, use the Novus One. Uh, I use that on more of like a t-shirt rag, uh, material, uh, white pores. Now that's cleaning supplies. Other supplies you're going to want to have with you is um, Phillips screwdriver to get the screws out of the back. Uh, that's fairly obvious, you think. A flashlight uh, to help see inside there. Actually, um, well, a towel, like it's on to protect the surface or possibly if you have to set it somewhere to protect where you protect the plastics in the middle. 
a scrap board when you open it up there's some wires you'll see and we want to just have something to jam in there just to keep slamming down your fingers and i actually had to use some sort of pliers because it has a spade connectors a male and female and uh, i uh, like to actually just grab it because you don't want to pull by the wire you're going to rip it out and then you're going to the hardware store i use the pliers to hold on to one side of the connector so i can then get it off it's kind of slippery in there so uh this is a wire strippers with a little grip on there i like that because it's nice and thin you could use a normal pliers and this may not seem so obvious but a finishing nail and i didn't go over this when i was putting it back together uh, but when you're trying to line up the holes you don't want to cut new holes you don't want to cut new threads so a finishing nail will help you kind of check to make sure the holes lined up with where it should be and you can even pick it up and kind of use it to, to shimmy it over. It took, it took me a few times to get it. Uh, and then the other thing just to point out is when you are putting screws in, don't immediately go clockwise. Always go counterclockwise so you can feel the thread click into place and then tighten it down because you don't want to rip the hole out and, uh, and cut new threads. So that's kind of my updates after I got it together. Looks like my motor's getting a little sticky here. I'll have to look into that. But uh, other than that, um, it looks great. Bubble tubes are bubbling. Oh, uh, one last thing. If the bubble tubes are a little sluggish, it's been sitting for a while or whatever, sometimes it's just a, a tap at the bottom of them will uh, wake them up. But uh, this is also sitting at an angle, so they're going to be a little bit uh, lazy rather than sitting vertically on the, on the wall. So uh, I'm going to now look into that motor before I hang it up, and I'm going to get this hung up on the wall. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the bulb replacement section. Okay, disassembly of the speaker. Uh, I have it upside down on uh, blocks of wood with some uh, towels on it to protect the face. I have the blocks of wood by the inner ring. And uh, I've already started removing the screws. There's eight screws around the perimeter. And I'm down to just the last two. There's one back here. Now this bracket is the top. And uh, this one's almost out of two. This is the connection is the bottom do not disassemble the rest of this you're just going to take out those eight screws around the outside and uh, they're just a Phillips head short little uh, inch uh, wood screw now there's a connection at the bottom of this because it's this the bottom that hooks up all the bubble tubes around the outside so what I have to do is carefully <coughs> pry this up in a manner they don't break anything rocking all over the place don't want to break any plastics but there's a connection for the two bubble tubes there what I can do just to make it a little easier is I have a chunk of wood handy there we go it's now it's moving I just use the ends of this so now the next step I should be able to grab this it should be completely free and hopefully nothing got damaged Now, check the speaker cloths. Okay, you can see the two connections down here. Let me lay this flat. And uh, you can see the two connections down here that hook up to the white and black wire that goes to the bubble tube heater. Bubble tubes are all fine. No damage has occurred with taking this out. Maybe push this out of place, but nothing I can't just snap back into place. Uh, so what I'm going to recommend is these are F15 T8s. If you're going to open it up to replace one, replace them all. And uh, check them before you uh, put it back together, just because... It's a uh, pain in the butt enough to get this these off. If one burnt out, the other ones are due. You can see some darkening on the ends. And uh, for the, uh, the cost, the bulbs, uh, I'm gonna replace the starters because um, Normally starters don't go bad. These original ones are FS2s. I got four new FS2s I'm gonna put in. Just to validate and always make sure everything is good coming in. All right, 
those are your starters. So those are responsible for starting the bones. Now, before I go any further, uh, this is safe at this point. I mean, don't lift the wires. Get two, plug it in. All the lights light up. I'm happy with that. So now, I'm um, going to reverse the process. Uh, put it back upside down. Plug in these two connectors. Make sure I didn't damage anything. So I'll plug these two connectors in and then put the screws on and uh, that's pretty much it. But the whole trick is just knowing what screws to take out. And then when you put it back on, you wanna make sure you line up the holes uh, with the screws. So I'm going to flip it back around. Okay, where it disconnected, that's the top. Another thing to note is I'm just gonna point out, you don't wanna rotate this when you're putting it back on. So um, the uh, bubble tubes, heaters are at the bottom. So this is the top. So you always have this being the top. And actually I'm just gonna take, just make sure, never wipe down the inside of the plastics either. You never want to risk scratching them or anything. If you're, you're unhappy with positioning of something, then now would be the time, but I, I'm not unhappy with this, but you see there's your four heaters, your four bubble tubes, but it'd have to bubble up. So that's always the bottom. And actually, now that I think about it, it might be a little easier. It's hanging off the table here to put it back together the other way. Bracket centered on the top. So we're good. So I'm gonna put those screws in and give it a cleaning. And that's pretty much changing the light bulbs. One thing I can check before we go too much further, it might be good to check Make sure everything works. Um, <clears throat> make sure you didn't pull out any wires. And uh, that's a little, a little, sometimes these motors are a little lazy starting. Uh, that's okay. But that's it. Um, I got the lights in. All four lights are lighting. That's great. So I'm going to button this up and uh, get it on the wall. Thank you for watching.